that's the gospel, isn't it? The good news is that Jesus Christ is the way. In the middle of this Advent season, the good news is that Jesus Christ is the way. The rest of everything else is just trimming, it's just wrapping, it's just bows. But the crux of the matter, the good news is that Jesus Christ is the way. Hmm. And say yes, Jesus Christ is the way. Oh, Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end first and the last the Christ child born in the little tiny town of Bethlehem the Holy Ghost who rules and reigns abides sustains and gives us a fresh wind and a fresh power oh holy God speak speak for your servants are listening it is in Jesus Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Jesus is the way. A few weeks ago, I was standing in a little plaza in a little town called Bethlehem. And I could remember the song that we sing every year, Miss Ruby. It sounds, Oh, little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie above thy deep and dreamless sleep. The silent stars go by. Yet in the dark streets shineth the everlasting light, the hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. When's the last time we really listened to that Christmas carol? When is the last time we really listened to the reminder that in this little town called Bethlehem that everything that is good and everything that is difficult, everything that is exciting and everything that is frustrating, then, now, and forevermore is held in these dark streets where Mary had a little baby and where there was no room in the inn. Do you remember the Golden Girls? You remember Rose from St. Olaf, right? Now, Rose is the sweetest person you ever could come in contact with. Her heart is just gold. She'd give you anything, do anything for you, but sometimes Rose just doesn't quite connect the dots. I remember one episode. It was a Christmas episode. And the ladies were talking about the hustle and bustle of shopping. And they decided that everyone wouldn't give everyone a gift, Miss Ruby. They decided that they would pick names out of a hat and be a little bit better stewards of the resources that God had given them. And Blanche, 
Oh, you remember Blanche. She was so nervous because Rose (laughs) picked Blanche's name out of the hat. Blanche dreaded Christmas coming. In fact, she took the box with her gift from Rose out from under the Christmas tree, Dr. Bob, and she hid it under the couch because she was so sure that it was going to be something that she did not want. They finished opening gifts, and Sophia, she's my spirit animal, (laughs) Sophia from Sicily, with a smirk on her face, said, Blanche, you didn't open your gift. Blanche rolls her eyes, pulls out her gift from under the couch, opens it, And is pleasantly surprised. She holds it up. And she says, it's a beautiful blouse. Rose, this is lovely. I can't tell you what what Rose said in response to that. (laughs) But because... Blanche says, I don't have to go hide my gift in the backyard. Rose, we're going to go with you to church. And we're going to help you serve at the soup kitchen on Christmas Day. So families who otherwise might not have a meal will be sure to have a meal this day. So all four of them pack up with their Christmas spirit in tow. And they get there. And Rose asked the preacher a question. You know, she's a Lutheran, Dr. Bob. And she asked the priest, she says, I don't get it. Why didn't Mary and Joseph just call ahead for a reservation? Oh, Rose. Bethlehem is this little tiny town. It's an anomaly in Israel. It's a Christian town and mostly run by Christians. They now share leadership of the town with Christian Arabs and Christian Israelis and Arab Muslims. The Church of the Nativity is actually several churches in one that are all built together and every different denominational faith has a different church. And everybody claims that their church, their space, is where that baby Jesus was lying in a manger. O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie above thy deep and dreamless sleep. The silent stars go by. Yet in the dark streets shineth the everlasting light, the hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. 
a long time before Bethlehem was put on the map with this extraordinary event. The prophet Micah told the people, he was telling them that in the midst of destruction, in the midst of despair, when you think that God is not with you, when you think that hope is fleeting, when you think that things should be better than they are, just remember that there will be a time that in the middle of your worst day, in the middle of your worst hour, when your mom is has cancer and your sister has died, when things are not well with your soul. But you, Bethlehem, you who are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for us one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old and ancient times. What the prophet Micah is teaching us is that no matter what it looks like, God is always at work. No matter what it feels like, God is with you. No matter what's going on at work and at school and at home and in your neighborhood and in your city and in your state and in your country and in this world and on this planet, that God has always had a plan and God has always been at work. And the good news is that Jesus... I forgot we're still waiting for the little baby to be born. (sighs) Bethlehem is a place for outsiders. The buses don't go through Bethlehem. Many of the Jewish citizens of Israel will not enter Bethlehem because of security concerns. Our own tour guide got off the bus and another tour guide got on the bus with security to take us through the church of the nativity. And as we wandered out front and into the plaza where they were putting up this incredible Christmas tree, Security was trying to round us up. Don't run off. Don't go look at that tree. You all have to stay here where you are so that we can keep you safe. In the place where Jesus was born. I can't walk 10 feet to see a Christmas tree by myself. Because we can't decide who is in charge and what belongs to whom. Bethlehem is a reminder that sometimes we get things wrong. Bethlehem is a reminder that Advent is critically important to our lives because it is a reset to how we live. Bethlehem reminds us that we are all in need of forgiveness. Bethlehem reminds us that really we are all outsiders. We are all in need of a savior. We are all in need of this Jesus. We are all in need of a different way of life that includes all of God's people and causes us not to fight over territory and ownership or even 
Who gets to cook Christmas dinner? Hope is hard for some people. And that's not unusual. The holidays present challenges for a lot of God's people because hope is hard. It is fleeting because we get so caught up in what we can see right now. Instead of what God has already done. What God is doing right now. And what God is planning to do in the future. You know what will get us to hope? When it seems fleeting. The reminder that this little baby was born in a little town that was nowhere for most people. It didn't have the pomp and circumstance of Jerusalem. It didn't have the contemporary pull of Tel Aviv. It was a place where outsiders went to get away from the reminder that they were outsiders that they did not belong. And yet God used this place to remind us that our hopes and our fears all belong to God. In Isaiah chapter 61, The prophet says to us, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord anointed me to bring good news to the humble. Other translations say to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim release to the captives and freedom to the prisoners, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn. Jesus came to give us hope. And to get to hope, we have to let some things go. We have to let go of some expectations about how things will be. We have to let go of some feelings about how things went. And we have to ask for forgiveness so that we can start again. The prophet Isaiah didn't say the spirit of the Lord is upon me so that you can keep rehashing all the things that make you mad. It doesn't say that I have come to give you life and life in abundance so you can keep reminding people about how poorly they treated you. It doesn't say that the spirit of the Lord is upon the sovereign God because he has sent me to afflict those who are brokenhearted and to make life worse for those who are captive. So let it go. Forgiveness leads to grace. And grace leads to hope. And hope leads us to this little tiny town of Bethlehem. Where we meet the little Jesus. Most first Sundays we come to this communion table... And we pray a traditional prayer of confession and pardon. 
It says, merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. And then we usually run through the rest of it, right? We run through the part that says, we failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. But listen. Merciful God. We confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Who do you need to forgive so that you can be free to hope? What needs to be forgiven in you so that you might be free to hope? What is standing in the way of your hope this season? Forgiveness leads to the grace that took us to a little town called Bethlehem where in those tiny dark streets the everlasting light shines and the hopes and fears of all of the years are not wrapped up in a reservation. But are wrapped up in Jesus. All right, it's time to go forth to worship, serve, grow, and engage. I hope you're participating in an Advent um, small group either on Wednesday, Thursday, or Sunday. And you are invited to um, intentional online prayer on Tuesday night at 630. This is the season to pray. Don't miss next week. At 9 and at 10 a.m., don't miss next week. You're going to be hearing about it, so don't miss it. 
And for those of you who like to worship online, I would invite you to come on in to the sanctuary um, because there is just something about being together during Advent. Now, stand and receive this benediction. You have a reason to hope. You have a reason to hope. You have a reason to hope. Go forth from this place, but not from the presence of the Most High God. Go forth in hope. Go forth spreading hope. Go forth telling the good news that in that little tiny town of Bethlehem, a baby was born and it changed everything. Go forth spreading hope.